Hey viewers, uh, in last tutorial we got familiar with the viewport and uh, the menu a bit. Um, in this tutorial we'll expand on that and maybe create some basic shapes. So uh, let me just tell you that uh, last time you saw that uh, all of these were a little smaller. What I've done is I have uh, used the most frequently used primitives and commands and put them onto the main tab. How you can do is if let's say you want to have extrude in here you use extrude a lot i usually use a shortcut so i don't have it in the menu but let's say you use the command here what you can do is just click on it drag and drop and there it is and if you don't want it in, uh, there anymore you can just click on it drag and drop down on the viewport and it will be removed and uh so let's say uh and these objects below the viewport that you can see is the same as looking at objects so this is like orbiting around the same as holding shift and alt and just uh, left clicking and moving around the viewport this is for a look at so if you have an object selected you can click it and it will look at it it also shows you the shortcut for this but i would discourage you to i mean unless this is your first modeling software which is very unlikely that it is I would discourage you to use the default soft, uh, shortcuts. I would actually encourage you to go and change them to whatever you are used to in your previous software. So let's say I use Max. I use Z to look at objects. I change Alt L to Z. And uh, these are all that. These is uh, fit. So if you have a lot of objects in the viewport and you zoomed into something, if you click that, all of that will be shown on the screen this is viewport so you have multiple viewports or you have single viewports and uh, we can just go to home to reset it this is display settings so you can change uh, you know ground plane offset and all of that variety environment uh, gray room dark sky blah blah you know all of this stuff i usually like to have it dark but let's say you have something that's very dark in the current spending in with the background you can change it and um, this is grid and there's the grid snap so let's say if you're creating something and you want it snapped to these uh, points on the grid, you can turn this on. Let me just turn that off for now. So uh, let's start with, oh, and of course, uh, let's not uh, forget the cube here, which is there's home button, which is if you're, let's say, if you're uh, lost somewhere in the grid and you don't know which side is which, you can just quickly click on it and it will take you to the home button and then you can also click on a face and it will take you to that side orthographic faces but obviously this is set to orthographic it changed to orthographic faces that's because my viewport is selected with perspective with orthographic faces so i can move around in perspective but as soon as i click a face on the cube it will go into orthographic view you can obviously change it from here i i like to keep it this way because uh, let's say that I don't want it to be orthographic view, I can uh, change it, I can uh, go to the face like using a mouse like this, but if I want it to be orthographic, I can just click here, and there you are. Let's go to home again, and uh, let's just zoom out a bit. So uh, this is the viewport and all, and you have other options here as well, so let me show you you have some reset home and set current view as home or set current view as front and top and all of that stuff so uh so let's just talk about primitives a bit more so there are so many primitives here i would like you to experiment with them yourselves but we'll just talk about a few useful ones that we mostly use to model everything since we are not going directly into automotive modeling and we will start from the basics up uh, wheel arc is not something that we'll use right now so for box we use that a lot we use sphere somewhat and then there's cylinder so let's just create a box and show you how you can create every each one of these from a plane itself so this will be what i'll uh, teach you in this tutorial and uh, this will also show you different ways to work on uh, primitives and how to modify them to make objects in 3d so here's a box let's just create that we'll create that in perspective 
fear that somewhere around here. Yeah, maybe maybe not so big, maybe somewhat like this. So here's our box. We'll right click and drag it to the right to make it okay. Then we want same shape to be created from a plane. So we'll just select a plane. Again go to perspective mode to select the plane that we want to work on and then click uh, make our select, uh, selected shape and then click again. Are we okay with everything here? Uh, no, we don't want any edge loops going so this is just a simple face. We will click OK or we can just right click, drag it to the right and there we are. Now this is a single face. If you go into the box mode or control case, you can see that it looks like this and this one looks without anything. It's very simple. It's like one of these. So we'll go into smoothing mode and what we'll do now is we will select let me just zoom into it a bit so it's easier to work with and then we will select each one of these edges using shift key while holding down the shift key we will click on them to select them if you want to deselect something you will press ctrl and click on it Now what we will do is we want to extrude them. So we will press Alt and drag it upwards like this. Then we want this to be closed. So we, we already have these edges selected since we extrude them just right now. And then we will go here on create and click on fill hole I already have this on my toolbar you see that this does not look a lot like this one now you may say why why is that first of all it looks a bit pale or tan in color and not black it's because it's inside out since we started from a face that looked uh, it's inside was I mean its normal face was facing upwards and we dragged it up and closed it from the top so it's inside out now we will click quickly change that by selecting everything press shift to select again and then we select everything and then we will go to utilities and reverse normals and then we will click on OK. So now it looks black, but it does not look as similar as it did. Uh, I mean, it does not look as similar as this box. One thing to see is it does not have these edge loops going through the middle. But another thing to say is that some of its edges are a bit thicker in size. That's because these edges are creased. Creased edges are edge that maintains their sharpness going from face to face. We don't want that. So what we'll do is we will select everything. Either we can right click. And go to uncrease edges or we can go to refine uh, cancel. we can go select everything sorry for that uh, I accidentally selected my last two option which was reverse normals and since it reversed on itself again it reversed everything so we will go to refine and click on uncrease edges and then every edge you can see that these yellow ones were the ones that were creased and now they have been uncreased so we we'll click on ok now it looks like a pebble and not exactly like this box that's because it does not have 
edge loops going through it. So what we'll do is we will create them by insert edge ring and how we can do is we can create on this click on this we can click on one face and then once we click on it it will ask you to drag around you can see that if we go on to the side it becomes blue and if we click in the middle it's yellow so if we click right here and now it's exactly in the middle of these two faces now we can also create another loop here and while it's in the yellow we will press again and same thing for this and just and click OK now it looks exactly like this but it's not in the same proportions so you can see that this is a bit longer but on its sides it's a lot smaller than this so what we can do is we can scale this object to match this you will select everything and then you see that this complicated gizmo appears this is not uh, this might look daunting at first but it's nothing to be afraid of or it's not that complex so what you can see is this one and this top one that you see is uh, for rotation this is for rotation on this axis and this is for rotation on this axis so if we were to rotate it like this it would rotate this also works for a single face so if we have this selected if we have this selected we can rotate it as well we don't want to do that but you will need to do this in modeling for creating various uh, shapes and sizes and everything let's once again select everything and we will want to look at this object in a way that we can select everything else and not have this selected so this is for rotation and then the middle object is to scale everything in all direction so we click click on it and then drag our mouse up and down this planar object is to move the object in this plane this is for moving the object in this plane and this is for moving the object in a single axis same for this for the z-axis this for the x-axis this for the y-axis as you can see here in the gizmo blue is for z green is for y and red is for x what we want to do right now is we want to scale it in both the z-axis and the y-axis but we don't want to scale it in this axis at least for now so what we will do is we will create one of these little arrows and then scale it down so it's now somewhat in similar proportions to its height but it's not the same as its width so we will click here and then drag it down it's a bit longer than it, it, its counterpart so we will again click on this one and drag it down just click outside of the box and have it deselected and you have created a very similar object a primitive a box primitive from a face this is the way that you model inside of alias speed form there's another way to model which is how you can create sketches and use splines to model something we will look that in the next tutorial for this one practice by creating primitives and just playing around with it see if you can create interesting shapes or something you know if you want to look at an object and create using it there's obviously you can insert an image which we will look at when we create with uh, splines and sketches right now I'm not looking into that 
let me just tell you one more thing you can do with a primitive object or any object for that matter is you can create a symmetry so how you can do is you can select everything you know have everything selected go to symmetry and then there's mirror internal so mirror internal is that it will divide itself on the object's local axis so let's say if i go to mirror internal if i extrude this face this face will be extruded as well while mirror duplicate will extrude it on the axis of the grid so let me just mirror duplicate to show you what happens if now it will ask us to select a plane the body that we want to select is here let's just cross both of them out do you want to select this or this so we will click on t spline body click on this and then we will need to select a mirror plane so we will click on any of this object so we will just let's say we want to mirror on the x axis we will select the z and x mirror and then we have it let's say we want to mirror it on the local axis of the object we can go to symmetry and mirror internal uh, come on and then it's asking me asking me which face do you want to mirror so let's say i want to mirror this face and this is the face i want this is the one face and this is the second face and i click on ok and now you can see that it's mirroring through this green line so if i were to extrude this or if i were to move this it would move on the other side as well so this is one way to mirror objects there's another way to for symmetry to work is it's the same thing as mirror internal and mirror duplicate but it's circular duplicate so you can have a lot of lot of objects we can select these and then we can select let's say we want to have first we want to select a t-spline object so this one then we want to select a plane so let's say no we can't select a plane we have to select an axis for this sorry so we want it let's say we want it to be mirrored on the x-axis we select it and then we can create how many objects symmetry do we want and we can change that using there was a gizmo here yeah here it is so one two three and four five six seven and like that it's a, it's a cool little thing you can create wheels with this wheel creation because you can just have one spoke of the wheel created and then you can have it uh, mirrored to all that different axis play around with this play around with the primitive play around with the symmetry create interesting shapes and then i'll catch you on in the ne next tutorial which we will create different shapes using splines on an image of a blueprint of any object let's say uh motorcycle uh, oil tank or full tank or something like that thank you for watching uh, subscribe because there's more tutorials coming and i like this video if it helped you comment if you want anything else to be taught thank you have a good day